What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Average Bros Media. My name is Nick and today we're installing a JDM bumper setup on the 2005 Legacy GT. So as you can see the bumper down in the corner there, uh, this is off of a Spec B in Japan. And going along with that we have all new grill, fog lights, crash beam, fender liners, um, I think that covers most everything. And, oh, and a front lip. Um, so we're going to go ahead and walk through how to do that. Obviously the first step is getting all the old stuff off. Uh, Subarus are kind of like big Lego kits, so this should be interchangeable between some other Subaru models, and you have you give some idea of how to get your bumper off. So let's go ahead and get the car up. Uh, because we're putting new fender liners on, I'm going to go ahead and pull the front wheels off after putting the car on jack stands. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get the car up on jack stands now. So like I was talking about, there's the two screws right here. They both have a Phillips style screw top, um, but they're also a, kind of a hex head, so using a socket is usually the easiest way to go on those. And then there's the two poppets right here. Uh, if you can't get under them with your fingernail, a flathead screwdriver will do the trick. And then up top on the grill, there's four little kind of poppets uh, that clip in to hold the grill up there. You can just use a flathead screwdriver to press those down to release them. And then once you've done that, the grill will pop right off. Okay, with the grill removed from the car, we're ready to start pulling the bumper. Uh, the bumper is pretty much attached all by poppets that run along the bottom front lip of it and then into the wheel wells. Uh, pretty simple to pull off. They can be a little tricky sometimes as they've gotten older or stuck. Um, I found that a flathead screwdriver and then a pair of pliers like these guys here they can actually wrap around that top piece and pull it out work really well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this uh, as we pull the bumper off and get ready for the new bumper to go on. So let's do it. Alright, so we have the bumper off the car, obviously. Um, next up is getting this crash beam off of here. So with the JDM bumper, it's a little bit shorter profile than the US one. Uh, so it's a slightly smaller profile crash beam to accommodate that. Uh, there's four bolts on each side. We're going to go ahead and get those removed. Uh, and you may have noticed when I took the bumper off, that I'd do some extra disconnecting of the fog lights. Um, obviously when you're pulling the bumper off, you have to disconnect them at any point. Uh, but for any of you guys doing this swap on your car, the JDM versus USDM fog light housing is a little bit different. Uh, there are ways to make the USDM ones work on the JDM bumper, but for the sake of convenience, I just went with the JDM ones, and I'll swap the back cap over on that housing to accommodate the HID bulbs. So let's go ahead and pull this stuff off uh, and kind of get working towards getting all the JDM components on and then getting the bumper on. Okay, so after taking a little bit closer look, I'm actually going to take off the headlight brackets here before removing the crash beam. That'll just give me a little bit extra clearance between the two uh, when I'm removing this, and these have to be replaced with the JDM ones anyway. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that, uh, and then actually pull off the crash beam next. Okay, we have the headlight brackets off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the crash beam off. Like I said before, there's four bolts on either side there holding that crash beam on. Those are 12 millimeter bolts, so we're going to go ahead and pull those off. Uh, and then there's a few more smaller pieces we need to get off before we start going the other way and getting the JDM components on. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, with a lot of these components off the front end of the car, there's definitely a lot of dirt that you'd expect from a 12-year-old car back there. So I'm going to take this time to just kind of vacuum that off, clean up what I can before we start putting on some of the newer components. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 
So I cleaned off a lot of the dirt that was left over. Uh, a few last little pieces to get put on uh, so we can start working in the other direction and putting parts back on the car. Uh, this piece is what they call an air dam. It goes down below here. Uh, it just helps guide air into the correct places. This one's specifically for the JDM bumper. Um, I've heard kind of mixed opinions on whether or not you actually need it, uh, but I found one and picked it up so we can have all OEM spec parts with the bumper. Uh, and then these little guys here, the slider component that goes on the side of the car to kind of hold the bumper up where it meets up with the fender. Uh, so let's go ahead and get those installed now. Okay, so the last piece that we need to do uh, that's the USDM component needs to be swapped out is the fender liners. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that as much as I've been procrastinating it. Um, this air dam is the JDM piece, so this one's all reinstalled here. Um, it mounts up to the same places for the most part, um, but uses a couple different places, same hardware. Uh, but that, again, just fits the lower profile of the JDM bumper. Um, I've heard kind of mixed things on that as well, you know, as whether or not you need the JDM version. Um, but for how cheap it was, I picked it up and I'm, you know, glad that I did. So let's go ahead and swap out those fender liners and get rocking to get everything else put back together. All right, so we have the old fender liners out. I've spray down and wash the new ones. Um, well, they're not new, they're off of a used car in Japan, so I wanted to get all the dirt off those. While those are drying, uh, I want to go ahead and put the crash beam back on, put the light brackets back on, and start making some forward progress towards getting that bumper on. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll reconvene in just a sec. Okay, so we just finished up getting the crash beam back installed, as well as the headlight brackets. Um, so the front end should be good to go. Um, for anyone doing this job at home, uh, and if you're using those JDM brackets, there are a few less mounting holes than the USDM ones. Um, there's just not a spot for them, so I'm assuming that's not an issue. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and we're gonna look at getting the fender liners back installed and starting to look at putting the bumper back on the car. All right, we are almost there. As you can see, we have the bumper sitting in front of the car. Um, all of the fender liners are back on the car uh, and the components up front. Fog lights are hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and get the bumper on, get that all buttoned up, and then throw the front lip on. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So the car is all situated, wheels are back on, uh, car is sitting on the ground, bumper is all tightened up. Uh, the last thing to do is get the grill installed. And in order to get this grill to fit, it takes some slight modification given that they're from different generations of Legacies. Um, if you're familiar with the Legacy, the bumper is what would be for like an 05 through 07 in the US and the grill is for an 08, 09. Obviously the years differ a little bit in Japan. Um, but this grill will work with the bumper with some slight modification. What you're gonna need to do is cut these little tabs here and here. Just cut those off as you can see that I've done uh, and then I filed them flat and then we'll need to cut or not cut but drill some additional holes to match up on top here for uh, where the bumper goes or where the grill goes into the bumper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show it to you guys uh, when it's all done. Alright, that is going to wrap up the install for the JDM Spec B bumper on the 2005 Legacy GT. I hope you found that install video helpful and enjoyed the content. If you want to see more content like that in the future, please hit that subscribe button down below. If you have any questions about the install or the parts I use, feel free to leave a comment. We'll definitely get back to you on that. And as always, you can find us on Snapchat and Instagram at Average Bros Media. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the future.